although it worked for its focus, it's the morning after the night before as Nottingham Forest fans reflect on a disastrous 5-0 defeat that looked to signal the end of Steve Cooper's tenure. Cooper, though, remains in charge ahead of the Wolves game after carrying out his pre-match press conference. Is it the right decision? Who's to blame for what's gone wrong? Where's the unity and spirit gone? Why is a player clapping the away end in a Fulham shirt after a 5-0 loss? Joining me to discuss all that are, first of all, former Reds midfielder David Prutton. Prutz, how are you? Do you know what time it is? Having just shifted this around five yeah, or six times. Yeah, I'm, and I'm terribly sorry for that. The wonderful comment about being as slow as Sangara was in midfield to get into the podcast, which I thought is <laughs> super duper. Yes, a, a little bit of admin my end, but I'm, I'm all yours for the next um, five minutes. So get on with it, mate. <laughs> <laughs> well, we need more than five minutes after last <laughs> night. Certainly good to have you with us. Also good to have Michael Temple back on the podcast. Temps, how are you doing? Reflecting on the misery of last night, so I guess. Yeah, it was such a miserable agenda. I think you've set the tone at the top of the programme there, haven't you? But yeah, look, just, just very quickly, thanks for everybody that sent me messages. Those that I know, those I don't know. It's, it's really helped me a lot and I'm uh, really pleased to be back. Well, as we say, very good to have you with us back on board. Would have hoped for better results to talk about, but uh, we shall do that nonetheless. In the meantime, a few uh, quick thank yous as ever. Uh, I mean, this probably isn't the time, but I think we were like number three in the Spotify charts and number two in the Apple charts, which is is mad for football. So great to have all that backing. And as I always say, great to have the backing of the Trent Navigation as our sponsor. Very much appreciate it. Get down if you can uh, and drown your sorrows over this game and look ahead to the Wolves game. Does that include us. free drinks, Matt? Uh, it might do for you. Matt, I don't know. No, I mean for you. Yeah. I don't mean everyone getting down to drown the sorrow. Suddenly, a, like, a wave of hundreds of people turn up demanding <laughs> that's, free that's drinks. That's the worst sponsorship the deal in history, isn't it? What? If you give everyone free drinks. <laughs> I mean, for you as the as the creator, as the brains behind it all, surely. Uh, I don't know. I'm such a terrible negotiator. Uh, oh. no, I'm not sure Temps was my negotiating advisor, so I'm going to blame him for not getting that clause. No one's turning that face down. Look at him. Look at his little face, Temps. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk about the, the despair of last night and where it leaves us. Temps, just kick us off with your thoughts uh, on, on the game, first of all, before we open out into the manager situation. Well, one of the worst performances that, that I've seen, and Cooper used the word, uh, d desire, didn't he? But players get managers sacked. And some of those performances last night from um, a selection of the, the Forest players uh, were, were such that Steve Cooper probably will lose his job over it. We've signed Ibrahim Sangari for 35 million quid and he seems to think it's acceptable to pass to the right back at, at every possible opportunity. Not brave on the ball, not brave throughout the game, passive and unsurprising that he was um, dragged at half time a week after being dragged after an hour. And that was just symptomatic of a, a lacklustre performance, one that was really, really tough to watch. So much credit to those fans that were, that were there and sang to the end because I was ready to throw something at the telly. <laughs> what do you make of it as a former player, Prot? So, and then I'll ask you a follow-up about what, what would have happened afterwards. But what did you make of the game? Um, it does smell like a game that does signal the end uh, of when a manager's in charge. I think... A lot's made about body language and, and interpretation of what people are seeing from the players. But um, as a team, they were terrible. Um, a real lack of fight, a real lack of um, leadership is another word that's been chucked around, which I think is exactly right. Desire was another one um, that Steve mentioned after the game. And that's before you, you get stuck into possibly the minutiae of what then falls at the manager's feet, which is team selection, formation, tactics, and the way that you go about stopping the opposition. But if you don't have the fundamentals, then I'm, I'm and this is not this is not a way of standing in front of Steve Cooper for the next however how long we're going to chat and just blindly defending it. I'm not saying that at all. A, a manager lives and dies professionally by the people that he puts on the pitch, and if he's got a trust in performances such as that, then my God, he's in trouble. He's in massive trouble because it's you. You, you come in, we stick the microphone under his nose, and, and we ask him questions about what went wrong. How do you feel? Um, and you, you must just stand there as, as a as a boss and just kind of go, well, I don't know. We we, we work on a lot of things in training. I'm, I'm sure they don't turn up to training. At half nine, go home at one o'clock, and in between they just sit and chat and don't, don't really do anything. I'm, I'm, I'm sure it's really 
incisive and it's really detailed because there's no other way of approaching the Premier League. You can't just toss it off and expect to get results. Um, and against a team like Fulham, I think Fulham have made great strides getting back into the Premier League and becoming relatively comfortable in the Premier League. But the first port of call before it's back in that top level is to be a team like Fulham. And when a team like Fulham are putting five past you and it ended up looking like a cup tie between a, a Premier League team and a League One team, then again, like I said, my God, you're in trouble. So after he's in the dressing room, uh, I don't know what's said, but would you hope, Cooper's not a rant and raver necessarily, but is Ryan Yates standing up and absolutely giving it both barrels to some of these players? Not that he wasn't culpable himself for yeah. you know, a goal, but at least yeah. you know you know you're going to get the effort from him. Does Do words have to be said and players pinned against dressing room walls in that circumstance? Um, I think the days probably of pinning against dressing room walls are gone. Um, you, like you say, with, with someone like Yatesy, who we've spoken about in glowing terms on this particular podcast, and people have different opinions about um, him and what he brings to the side at the very top level in the Premier League. But there is an element of of that responsibility that he shoulders by being the type of player that he is and the background of the player that he is. And you could tell his frustrations. Yes, as you say, ultimately culpable towards the end of the game anyway. Didn't start the match. That's, I mean, that's that's another thing with regards to this because um, that reaction of a player coming on, well, there is still that seed that, that kind of says, well, if you're that kind of decisive to the team, you start the game. And again, that's not me condescending what Ryan brings to the side, but it, it's if you're ranting and raving and you, didn't even, you couldn't even get into that team that was woeful in the first half, be it the manager's opinion or whether your ability or whether your form's not quite at it, then... There's questions that you'd ask yourself, but he, he strikes me as I know he has done as a, as a very honest player, both with regards to his own performance in the team. But I'd like to think there'd be some form of fireworks. The, the general apathy that you saw on the pitch would probably manifest itself in just quiet, I would say, silenced almost, because it's it's quite hard. Like we said, anytime you come on something like this, anytime you discuss footballers, nobody for one second is pulling apart a person or straying into territory where you're saying, let's come away from the player. Let's look at the, the personality of the man in the shirt. But players, they were terrible. They, they didn't look interested. They didn't look um, like there was any fight there. They went over to clap. For, well, I mean, the, the fans, I was texting you, wasn't I, during the game, and, and it you could hear him singing loud and proud in defiance of what they were seeing, singing about Steve Cooper. Now, fans can be not guilty, but prone to blind loyalty. But they know what that man's done. And 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 then without it becoming a broad Steve Cooper chat about, he's got, got them back into the Premier League, so he should be... You don't stick with the manager blindly if you don't think he's doing the job. But they understand what he's done. And then they absolutely understood. And that is that is a, a great, great strength. And there's no condescension in this of a Forest, of a Forest fan. That they understood a performance like that is not the mirror image of what the manager wants, is it, at all? That, that that whimpering kind of mess at the end, nothing to do with Steve Cooper, that. No, and you see Temps, you know, I mean, Cooper's having to wave the players over, not not good. Oral Mangala, who I do think put his lot in uh, and played, you know, OK in the circumstances, but wearing a Fulham shirt in front of the away end when you just got tanked 5-0, I mean, come on, <laughs> absolutely ridiculous, isn't it? It was a cold night, mate. I think he just needed the layer and he'd been dragged over by the gaffer after a 5 0 defeat to, to say cheerio to the to the fans. So who's asked for a shirt? Yeah, I know who's who, who wanted to do a shirt top last night. But I, I, I don't oh attach God. too much meaning to that. But but speaking more in, in the round, Steve Cooper's better sides, and I think there's there've been two or three periods over the last two years where he's, he's had a, a a real collection of players, a core of players that are willing to run through walls for him. And we think back to the championship campaign, that was probably Yatesy, Joe Worrell, Bree Samba, Keenan Davis, McKenna and the like, they, they they weren't always the most technically gifted players, but they were running through walls. There were periods last year where that was the same, where you know Tywo was coming to the fore and Danilo was doing well, Felipe was doing well, uh, Renan Lodi, they, they seemed to buy in and just have this desire, this this effort. There was there was never a question mark over the amount of running and the, how, how active they were in defending and how they eked out the back end of last season. The, the reaction... He's getting, as Prut said, to, to the sum total of the week on the training ground and the 20 minutes before the match is now not being felt in the game. 
And that's that's why it's tough. And I fear there's there's no way back for Steve Cooper now. It's just a matter of which side of, of the Wolves game that he'll 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 leave his job. I'll remember him fondly as the guy that took us from 44th in the football pyramid to, to, to 16th. And when he comes back with Crystal Palace in six months' time, I think he'll be applauded from all four corners of the ground. But it, it just it reminds me of the Stuart Pearce situation a little bit in the sense that by all accounts, he had this amazing method and team talk. And the first two, three, four times you heard it, you were ready to, to run through walls. You, you bought into his method. And I just fear that whatever Steve Cooper's doing now from Monday to Friday, it's not quite getting through. And the pressure cooker of the relentless quality of opposition you face in the Premier League allied to a run of four consecutive defeats. The necessity within that to put players under pressure, to make changes to the team, you now ask yourself who is out there on that pitch carrying the torch for Steve Cooper? Because MGW has been dropped in the last couple of weeks. Sangare has mm. been dragged twice. Dominguez has been bombed. Was has been bombed. Yates has been bombed. I think he, he needs his method relies on having four or five talisman around him who is voice on the pitch, who carry everything from the dressing room, from the training ground out there for 90 minutes. And for the last two weeks, certainly. I've I've just seen so much of that dissipate, and it's been really sad to see. Mm. And <clears throat> I'll just go back to Mangala because I'm not digging him out as a bad egg. I just think it's a stupid look. It's just you know foolish, but not I I, I wouldn't class him as a wrong or anything. I think he's done well for us since he's been here. Um, just on Cooper, then, but I mean he's staying by the look of it. He's done his press mm -hmm. today. Is it the right decision? Is it only because they can't get someone in? Should they have just made the move and put Stephen Reid in charge? What do you think? Well, if they can't get someone in, then it's poor forward planning. Every manager knows that at some stage he's going to leave his job. Every chief exec, every owner, every uh, recruitment department knows that at some stage there's going to be someone else at the helm. I've, I've obviously played there under David Platt and Paul Hart, and I've got, uh, a lot of fondness for David Platt because he put me in the team and even more fondness for Paul Hart because of what he kind of gave us as young footballers. Steve Cooper is the best Forest manager since um, Dave Bassett. I mean, statistically, there's no arguing with that at all. Dave had a team that was wonderful to watch and swept them swept themselves back into the Premier League. Obviously, that first season back was a disaster. But for a generation, managers have come and gone trying to get them back into the Premier League and some have succeeded in getting them into League One. So that's where you've got to stand with Steve. The thing is with, because I think we discussed, there was a, a, a breaking statement on, was it TalkSport, Mark, what it said about is safe for another, for another uh, lives, to, lives to fight another game. Mm. Um, if it was the first time this had been discussed, then I can see the benefit in that because it's almost like these pivotal moments. Sir Alex Ferguson and Mark Robbins scoring a goal uh, to keep him in a job at Man United. Suddenly, 25, 30 years later, he's created the biggest football team on the planet. Forrest are, no, are nowhere near them. We all, and we're all, we all know that. But because there's been so much debate about his job in the past, you, you've got to... And I, I absolutely understand, we're talking about judging players professionally, we judge the manager professionally as well. He understands what this is. He absolutely understands what this is. But let's put our feet in Steve Cooper's shoes. Yes, he'll be very well paid. Yes, he's managing in the best league on the planet. Mentally, I honestly don't know how it doesn't like blow you to pieces. When you when you look at these games where you take the Leicester game last season, you, these moments where you're going, wow, I don't know how you're dealing with that. I do not I texted him during the course of that bad run last year, and last season. There was question marks, of course, towards the kind of like Easter time, moving into the end of the season. And and I'm not betraying any trust here. I just said, mate. I said it looks looks ominous from the outside looking in. It looks crap. It looks it looks it, as much as we love Premier League football. It looks like a terrible job because people are constantly going. You're going to get sacked. You're going to get sacked. It takes a very strong person to wade through that because it's that's all it is. You're wading through a certain consistency of stuff around your feet. And he said, there's people in far better, far worse positions than me. There's there's people who are suffering in real time in different situations. And some may see that as a bit of a platitude. Others may see that as someone who's absolutely got his head screwed on and understands where a football manager's uh, job lies. But he's under intense scrutiny. 
I, I don't know whether... I mean, can you put things right in one game against Wolves? I saw Wolves against Burnley on Tuesday night. Not too much to pick between the two of them. I absolutely, right now, fancy Wolves to win the game. Absolutely. They've got more heart, more desire. They've got more collective quality. They've got more match winners that are in better form. They've got a better feel around the place. They're behind a manager who's had some tricky times across his career so far. Um, and what difference does one game make? You, you're talking about players that are inherently inconsistent because of where they are in the division. Everyone under the top teams are inherently inconsistent. That's why everyone doesn't win every game every week. So if if he's relying on one performance to dig him out before the next time when he's got to answer the same questions, then, my, my God, that's that's kind of dead man walking territory, isn't it? Mm. Um, there's over 500 people watching, which is great. So do us a favour and hit like and subscribe if you haven't already. I think the videos are getting way more views than subscribers. And uh, so that would really help if you can subscribe and spread the word. Is the difference temps, as Prutz says, you know, last season it looked bleak, but it felt like everyone was part of the project and everyone bought in from the stands to on the pitch. And that collective spirit's gone, the atmosphere's gone in the stands. If we do have, to me, right now, real Leicester Leeds vibes that we are bang in trouble. Expectation has risen exponentially, and that there definitely was a sense last year was just being happy to be there. And I think there was a, there was a discussion around people happy for us to go down with Cooper, knowing that he'd, he'd bring us back and keep a core side together. But that's dissipated now because we've seen the, the ambition of the owner and we've seen the financial backing of the owner. And that has translated into quality additions with every single physical, technical attribute to, to live with the Premier League. I come back to Sangari again. Does that matter if you're not running? Does that matter if you're not winning your heads and tackles, not, not closing down? It, it, it doesn't. You, you're choosing to be... Brave on the ball, take a risk, try things. Murillo's pass into into centre mid um, as, as, a, as a decent example of that. Or you cop out of it, you you, you play CDM, you play a 15, 20-odd pass to your right back and you, you kind of amble back and, and try and support them again. And that's, that's, that's what we were seeing last night. So expectation has risen rightly. Resourcing has risen exponentially. And yet the sum total of the results of this squad at the minute are really, really poor. And Prots will speak to this, but you'll now have this collection of players in one corner of the car park who have been training in a slightly different way to those 15, thinking, you know what, a train, change of gaff would be good for me here. I, I'm in the bomb squad. I'm nowhere near this. Someone else comes in with a fresh fresh slate. I'll have a chance to impress. And I might get myself back out there. So it, it, it really is difficult. I was expecting um, a picture of the corner flag and an official press release on the Forest website this morning. It hasn't happened. Um, I don't think anything other than a resounding victory against Wolves, which could limp this on for a little bit further, um, will we'll stop him um, getting the chop at some point in the next uh, week or so. And I'll just repeat what I said before. I'm really sad about that because I'll remember him for his entire body of work, which is positive, but the last four games have been dire. Temps, let me ask you a question. You talk about um, expectations rising. Expectations via the fan base or via the club itself? Both. I think the fan I think the fan base expects us to be in that twelfth to fourteenth bracket where the ownership and the club expect us to be in that tenth to twelfth bracket. Steve Cooper's a realist, but he will have he will have come with a list of players and said, to achieve that, I need this. And I don't think he would have chose to have sold Brennan Johnson unless he absolutely had to, which which we did to, to rebalance the the squad. Um, but he he's been backed. He he can't say he hasn't had the financial backing, the the salaries, the transfer fees, the, the the coaching staff, the team that he's put around uh, him is is largely of his making with one or two high profile exceptions of players that were bought in by the, the kind of machine that looks after recruitment. So, yeah, I think fan expectation is still is still in that kind of bracket. I think ownership expectation is still in that kind of bracket. And last year, 17th was everything. Mm -hmm. I suppose the thing I didn't get props is, I was mm. saying this last night, the Villa game was a month ago. The drop-off is extraordinary. Are we just seeing the chickens come home to roost in a way with our recruitment policy that we sign so many players that you're always rebuilding a team and as soon as you don't have the right group, it all goes to hell? Or is it more complex than that and you know the manager's at fault as well? I think the manager is at fault in some ways and we'll come on to that. But I don't know, so what, what's gone wrong in a month to be this bad? 
It's an inconsistent team. Like I said, the the the, the very nature of what the Premier League is, if you're not Manchester City, if you're not um, Liverpool, if you're not, uh, I mean, look at Villa, Villa, Villa are flying. If, if you're not a consistent team, then this is going to happen. Um, the, that, that, the, the thing that, the thing that su not surprises me, but what really does make you think, um, I, I, I don't, without being too blunt, I, I, the expectations should be for the next five years to be 17th or above. The, the players that are being brought in, they they look half decent. They're not ones to take you to the. I mean, the middle portion of the Premier League is a little league in itself. The top the top end is is they're on a different planet. They're playing a different brand of football completely. So it's it's not defeatist or disgrace to say Nottingham Forest, having got back into the Premier League after two decades out, should be hanging on for dear life. I understand. I understand. The, the evolution of a football club. I understand how um, you need to get back there and you need to make sure that you are as stable as potentially possible. But I, I've not, you, you're not seeing players come in and dominate games, are you? I, I, unless I'm missing something. I, I, I watch as much of Forest as I possibly can. Um, the West Ham game, for example, you've got your midfielder passing it straight to the opposition who then go and score. You've got players that aren't picking up from set pieces. This is a Premier League team, I'm talking. This is not a League Two pub team. This is not a team that's that's kind of that's not got internationals in or take away how much play players are played. That's that's by the by, that's that that's because the monster itself is huge and generates so much money for people that never put on a pair of football boots that the byproduct is the players get paid well and rightly so. But the 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 kind of it's it's almost akin to the Leeds United example. Oh, we finished really well in the first season. Let's look at the European places. Absolutely not. No, no. And I'm not. I've never run a football club. I never will run a football club. I'll never be part of a club hierarchy in that particular sense. But I do understand the PR of it. That you've got to. It's got to. If you're not. If you're not smashing forward, you're standing still. I, I absolutely understand that and what the PR perspective is on that. But. Come on, be realistic. It, re, real, and and it's not, like I said, I've loved playing for that football club, but I don't feel it in the same way as a, a fan that follows them, that, that lives and dies by the three points, the one point, the defeat on a weekend. So I, so you hopefully, the, the, what I've seen in football over the course of 25 years, speaking to people that do work in football clubs, seeing managers get hired and fired, seeing players toss it off, seeing players that aren't very good go through the gears and become whatever. The, 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 it's it's staggering to think that the, the realistic element of running a football club then gets caught up in the bubble of being back in the Premier League because it's got to be slow, incremental progress. If that progress is a place a year for five years, for a decade, that's progress because of what, because of what the Premier League is. So it's... Um, Forest are, are where they are because they should be there inconsistent players that aren't consistently at Premier League level but can get results here and there. That's what that seems to be what the objective is, unless I'm missing something. Are, are you stood there at the City Ground every single week seeing world-class players? The, the only players, thing, the only thing players you're missing. that you'd look at. I mean, obviously, Brennan's gone. Sorry for putting him back. Yeah. Brennan's gone. Potential there as well. A very, very good footballer. Still a lot to work on, but potential's there. Who, who, who do you look at in that starting eleven on that bench and go, yeah, they'd go and do a job for someone else? Well, the the only thing I think you're missing, Brooks, is the 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 inconsistency comment in in terms of short term form is is wrong. We've we've been consistently losing four games in a row now and <laughs> going to going to Wolves up against us, and and that's that's no time, right? And it's it's less than four weeks ago we were we were bouncing around and beating Villa and thinking always oh, always rosy in the garden. But you, you think what's Forest's spine? And it's it's hard to name at the minute. Tywo for sure if he was fit. Mm. Morgan Gibbs White for sure if he was in form. Marilo because of what we're seeing from him. There's there's no goalkeeper for me who's rock solid in that spine. There's no partner for Marillo necessarily who's part of that <coughs> spine. And I'm struggling. I, I could make half a case for Mangala. I'm struggling to put another central midfielder who's of that spine. 
I think all the successful Forest teams, the ones, the one that you were a part of, the one that got promoted from the Championship the back end of last season, had four or five plays that, that, that it was built around. We've had five captains this season. And mm. in various games, three or four, three or four of them have been bombed, injured, not part of it, whatever. It's it, it's not a it's not a healthy um, place at the minute. And if we can't turn it around miraculously with, with some kind of flip in performance at the weekend, um, someone else will have to come throw the jigsaw box up in the air and and try and put it back together in a different order. Mm. I suppose, but <clears throat> there's two problems. Well, there's one big problem. We don't know our best 11 and we don't know how we want to play. Or we know mm. how we want to play and we're nowhere near executing it. Well, either or, they're both terrible. So how much is the manager blame to blame for that? Because he has to take a portion of the blame if he keeps chopping and changing, <clears throat> as Temps rightly says, switching caps in every five minutes is no good. And how much is down to recruitment that we signed a lot of players for a lot of different formations. We've got this very bloated squad. So I don't criticise the owner for backing the manager, but there's a lack of cohesion of thought and there's a lack of cohesion of planning for what happens mm. on the pitch, especially when we don't have Taiwo. And there's so many problems mm. that I suppose the question is how much is Cooper to blame and how much is the whole setup of the club to blame? What's gone so wrong so quickly? Well, well sadly, what happens is it becomes one man's fault by default. If you know what I mean, it's he, it's it's his team, and uh, uh, people upstairs are very quick to put distance between themselves and and what goes on on the pitch. Like you say, here's your players. Regardless of whether those players are any good or not, we've spent money. Regardless of whether that money's been well spent, fair few players, and obviously, given the broad, multicultural, cosmopolitan nature, what the Premier League has been for a very long time now, and you get asked this all the time about uh, what do you think of the new signing. More often than not, you're kind of going, God knows, never heard of him, don't know what he does. I can do a bit of research for you. I can look at the teams that he's played for. I can look at the countries that he's played in. I can look what national team he's played for. Until he sets foot in the Premier League in a forest shirt, you've got no idea what he's going to do. No idea. And I think that's what has been happening in real time with a lot of the players that um, Forrest have managed to get through the door and onto the pitch. I don't know how much Steve is the one that's got the final say on all of, all the players. It doesn't strike me as a place where the manager can go around and start swinging his weight around with regards to who comes in because um, it just looks like it's run a certain way, doesn't it? I'm not saying for one second that players get dumped on Coops and that's it. I'm saying he's got a say. Whether that is the final say, I, I, honest, I honestly don't know. So then he gets these players, whether they're all his or whether some are, are kind of like not pushed upon him, but but presented in front of him. Then as a manager, a well-qualified manager with a decent track record, it then becomes his job to get something out of him. Um, and if he can't, that then becomes the manager's fault. That That's that's just the way it works. You can't sack 25 players as much as possibly a manager would want to do on a Monday morning. He alluded to that in his, in his post-match, didn't he? He said, look, I understand. I, I, I do get what the game is. I'm not stupid. I do understand that a team plays like that Everyone comes and asks me the questions, and I'm the one that walks out the door. He, he, we're, we're not talking about a daft man by any stretch. He's, he's very thoughtful, deep, and and, and um, articulate. So uh, it what happen, it, it becomes the manager's fault, but it is a mixture of players not doing the jobs that they're, they're ascribed to doing, playing in a way. And if a manager can't motivate the team, that's again that then becomes a manager's job. Whether motivation for a player is performances, glory, fame, money doesn't really matter. As long as they're not sinister things, find what makes them tick and make them tick. Here's your goal bonus. It's massive. Here's your appearance bonus. It's massive. You know what I mean? Win this game, have five days off. You know what I mean? Stay in London, do what you want for four days. As long as you come back in on Thursday and do exactly the same again, you find what makes each and every player tick. And that's certainly not been the case. But the other side of that, from a playing point of view, the professional footballer point of view, and, and without to go and sound all Roy Keane, it's your job. It's your job <laughs> to care. It's your job to, to look like you actually give a flying whatever about what this looks like. It, you, you've not been pumped by Manchester City. You've not been pumped by Liverpool. Fulham are a very, very good team and a well-run football club. But you've been pumped by Fulham. Fulham. Fellas, what, was your, what was your read on the supporters' reaction last night, Prutz? Because 
I spoke to a couple of people that were there and the consensus seemed to have been they were um, grateful for everything he'd done, kind of mm. accepting this was him saying farewell, sorry, goodbye, almost. Um, some, have, some have read that as them back in Steve Cooper to be given um, more time to, to, to turn things around. But I, I can't help feel that it was probably more of the former. It was them applauding his body of work and thinking it was the last mm. time they were going to see him as their gaffer. What do you think? Um, I can see absolutely what you're saying, Terence, very much so. I can see, because very rarely do you get a chance to say that before a manager gets moved on, do you? That, and that one of of wishing you had a farewell and that breakup being painful because... Um, but it's well, it's that line out of Christ cocktail, isn't it? When he, when he, when Tom Cruise is, is having a bit with his, his the 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 woman that he's seeing, and she says, "I don't want things to end badly." And she said, "Well, of course it's going to end badly. That's why things end. That's that's just, that's just the way it goes." Which has haunted me for all of my adult life. But um, that's to, to be able to have that chance. The defiant slice in in Steve would would not see that as a goodbye. That's him saying, "Sorry, what you've just watched there is is dross, utter dross." Um, and he's giving it all that, and it is. It becomes his fault. The players can go over and give it all that, and I, I hopefully used to do that good, bad, or indifferently uh, during the course of my career. And you get, you get a clap, you get a wave, you get people telling you to shove it wherever, and quite right. So you paid your money, you can say whatever the hell you want, and to 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 a certain degree, in my, in my opinion. But I think um, if if that is their way of saying goodbye, then it was very classy, and it was and it was a very touching and emotional way of doing it. But that's not to say that if he's then in the dugout uh, against Wolves, if he's in the, the dugout in the game after that, there's a sense of, well, we said off you off you go and, and you're still here. So uh, I, I saw that as as taking the situation and the emotion of that moment ex in exactly what it was, because they know how knee-jerk football can be, even though it's been a long time coming this chat. But I still think there's an honesty to the way that Forest fans approach a game like that and say, you know what I mean? If you are there, we'll stick with you. We understand when players are not pulling up trees. Excuse the pun, but they um, but they they understand, and that's not blind loyalty. That's just a classy touch from a classy set of fans. Hmm. It felt like a goodbye to me, well, rather than a please stay. I, I thought I struggled to see that there's a way back. Um, for Cooper. Just one question before we move on to what happens next if he does go. A lot of people in the comments are saying about Joe Worrell. You know, I think there's some bridges burnt there. What's uh, happened, Ryan? Do we know? No. Well, I think they've had a falling out, haven't they? He's bombed him out just, of the squad. And okay. Well, just, to what? Be seen. just what? On the training ground after a game? He's, he's a very forceful um, member of the squad, Joe, isn't he? Is, mm. is, is it something that about not being in the team? Is it, is it something that's been said? I don't know, but it seems like there's a broken relationship there. And, with, you know, obviously there's a few other players who don't, based on their actions on the pitch, don't seem mm. to be buying in. I mean, we've gone away from Brennan, Joe, Ryan, Steve Cook characters, um, mm. temps that you mentioned. Obviously, those players don't have the high ceiling, but they do have the big heart. Uh, was it... This is hindsight, isn't it? Was it a mistake to go away from those players too soon and go away from you know being a counter-attacking team too soon? We try to run before we can walk because we want to be... a much bigger club than we potentially are in the Premier League. Well, you need a balance, don't you? You can't just have 11 piano players in a team. You need you need three piano shifters. And by that, I mean those that are willing to do the dirty work, to be amongst it, to to, to be at least a seven out of 10 every week, to, to kick on when they can, um, but to be the driving force of the squad on and off the pitch. David Prutton was a great example of that when he was in the Forest <laughs> side. I think uh, Tom Kearney yesterday, who makes the best of his ability, mm. is captain of Fulham, does very little wrong, does very little spectacular, just his fundamentals are so so good, technically And he's been brilliant. out of the team temps, hasn't he? He's, been, exactly. he's, not, he's not started every game. Exactly right. But what is he around, the, what is he around that club? He's mm. a guy that sets the tone, sets the pace, maintains good relationships with everybody, speaks, speaks very well. And mm. we haven't got that now. And I just wonder if, if Steve Cooper's calling the, the war cabinet together today. H historically, he probably would have asked Yates and Wars to come in. Look, we're in trouble here. What are we going to do? Who are we going to trust? What are we going to back? And he, he can't do that now because he's had to cycle through so many um, 11s to, to try and, uh, and find a formula that, that works. He, he no longer has those trusted lieutenants who are the first names on the, on the team sheet. So he'll be surrounded now by his coaching team and those advisors. And I think that that link, my read from the outside, 
is that that link into the very heart of the dressing room um, isn't quite there as it was six months ago. Mm. I suppose the question again it now is if he goes, Prutz, which I think mm -hmm. he will, and I don't, uh, yeah, with regret uh, and sadness, don't have a particular problem with it when we're playing like we are. But then the question is what happens next? Who comes in next? Mm -hmm. You get this appointment wrong and then you're into March and you're in the relegation zone. It, it's a pivotal time and you have to get the right kind of manager in and you have to use January massively now. Well, this could cascade into an absolute disaster of a season, couldn't it? It could. It, yeah, it really could. I mean, there is a, there is a, a bit of a consensus that the three teams that came up will ultimately be the three teams that go down and that Everton seemingly will be um, OK. Obviously, they, they, they're they still um, appealing that points deduction as well. Um, like I said, I didn't see too much between Burnley and Wolves the other night. Sheffield United under Chris Wilder probably wouldn't have expected anything against Liverpool, but he may get a different tune out of them, um, even though I thought Paul Hakenbottle did tremendous work with them. And Luton Town, currently outside of the bottom three, two points above where Everton are, and then you get Forrest above them. Forrest still being six points above the relegation places. If Forrest finished there at the end of the season, again, I, I think without being too... Okay, defeatist isn't the word and realistic probably isn't the word either but it's regardless of what the owner expects I mean that that's that's success if his reflection on success is top half knocking on the door of Europe and Forrest get that that's amazing but realistically the teams you've got to smash your way through are, are all good teams there's no there's, there's, there's no easy way of getting into the, the top half of the Premier League at all as for who would possibly come in, I've seen one of the comments where they said Lopetegui as well. I mean, he came in and out of Wolves. Did did we see anything there that was that was kind of mind blowing? He's a good manager, decent track record. Why would it work at Forest? I, I don't know. Um, whether we, there's there's a lot of leaning towards kind of career coaches. They're suddenly popping up in jobs, aren't they? After spending twenty years on the training ground. Um, there's a there's a leaning towards experience. Roy Hodgson at Crystal Palace. Yes, he's got ties to it. Yes, he's been there before. And there's an understanding with that. Um, so from the point of view of where you go, who's around, whether it's a master tactician you need or whether it's a master motivator, it'd be great if you could get a mixture of both. But would he be out of a job at this stage of the season? Potentially not. And then obviously the other side of it is finances involved. If you... If you want a big superstar manager, there's big superstar salaries that come with that. And that is no quick fix. And that's no guarantee of success because he's still got to work with the same bunch of players until January comes around. Then does the owner once again throw a bit more money at it? Do you, do you look at it in a, in a slightly wider angle and say, yes, the manager gets the blame for it. What about the recruitment team? Who's bringing these players in? Who's where, where, where are they looking at for these players? And I'm not saying just because you haven't heard of them, that doesn't mean to say that, they're not very good. Leicester brought players in that no one's ever heard of, won the Premier League. Brighton bring players in, sell them in for three or four times the value. Many that you've never heard of, unless you lie and say, yes, I always follow Central and Southern American football to the nth degree. No, you don't. You've, you've used Google just as much as anyone else has. And whether they adapt to this country and culture remains to be seen. Um, so right now, it's the sad part about it is as I said, yes, it's been a run of games where no points have been accrued and performances have been super questionable. But the 16th in the Premier League, six points above trouble around big teams, where they're all big teams in the Premier League. Again, if it ends up like this at the end of the season, without coming away from what the ambition is and, and, and not forgetting, of course, the history and the tradition of Forest, it's another very small building block to be in a stable, a stable um, football club. And I, I hate to use the Leeds United reference, and I know it, it probably gets some Forest fans now, doesn't it? It's, it's totally understandable. But they had a, a bracket of players that got them up. They then spent money on players that um, were there to take the club to the next level. The next level for them, ironically, was the championship. So they weren't very good. They didn't gel together, and they were poor signings. So I'm not. It's not easy. I'm, I'm saying that it's not easy. But trying to kind of sprint before you get anywhere near crawling, I think is uh, is very questionable.
Mm. Yeah, that's what Mark said on last night's stream. Yeah, I mean, you can't sack a third recruitment team, can you? So it's going to be the manager that bites the bullet if anyone goes. And like you said, Prutz, you can't if sack you, If you sack a third recruitment team, then it, it goes back to... Well, and, and I know that Gary Neville gets a lot of stick for, for the way he kind of um, defends Manchester United as an entity and <laughs> viciously attacks the Glazers. If you keep employing people that aren't very good, it's your fault. It's not the people that you employ. You're looking at the wrong people. That's if you keep going round and round and round, then surely someone's got to go. Well, you're picking everyone. What? What? What's going? You're employing them, or whoever's employing the people that are getting employed. Get rid of them because it's not. If it's not working, then they, they're using the wrong people. Mm. Um. On the managers, uh, then, Temps, I mean, Lopetegui did do a good job at Wolves in terms of turning them around, but then he walked when he didn't get the cash he wanted. We discussed Potter last night. It's only needs a project. There's good young managers in the Championship who perhaps can know more about than me, like McKenna and Carrick and people like that. Will Still, someone said in the comments, there are names out there, and they all have high upsides, but they all have high high risk to a degree as well, don't they? Yeah, I just, I just think inevitably you'll, you'll change the style of the recruitment. So unlikely we'll go for young British coach this time. Um, you, you tend to tar that type of coach with a, a particular failing when something goes off. Man United have this when they'll go through this cycle of the hottest prospect in Europe, the best British coach, the former player, those, those kind of managerial types. So I think we're looking to, to for a European name. Um, we seem to. Have an eye on the on on the Bundesliga, don't we? And uh, the, the the fella from Eintracht certainly has a, a decent record, which is worth a look. Um, Lopetegui is Bucky's favourite. Didn't really inspire me too much at, at Wolves, but look, it's a fickle business. And if whoever comes in gets us on a march and wins his first two, then we're we're, we're chanting his name, aren't we? And Steve Cooper is soon forgotten. That's the reality of football at, at this level. Um, it will be a, it will be a sought after job. Make no mistake about that. I think there's there's the odd comment about waiting for the summer and and, and making sure that we don't make a, a knee jerk decision at this point. This is a Premier League job. This is highly sought after. There'll be a hundred people proactively looking to grab it, and Forrest will be targeting um, five or ten themselves to sound out for for discussions as well. So let's let's wait and see what happens. But my hunch is that we'll we'll look for a a manager with with European experience. Yeah, and we can't. I mean, we you know, we can't play as we are consistently like this now. The last two games are, you know, unacceptable. I think I could take stuff from the other defeats, but either Steve Cooper gets a massive change out of this group immediately, or you have to bring someone else in because you know, first and foremost, it's about the club staying in the Premier League. Mm. But, you know, I like the Championship prods, but I'm not that interested. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not that interested in it at the moment. If I that's not motivation. If that's not motivation enough to stay at the championship, you don't have whoppers like me talking about you in that particular division. I told you this before. If it's when you when you get the odd bit of um, hopefully um, harmless banter, my my answer to that is: we'll stop being crap then and stay in the Premier League. Don't come for me when you're in the championship. It's got nothing to do with me. Your performances on the football. No, that's not to Forest fans. That's that's the that's broadly in general. But it's um, it, that's it's yeah because it's the place to play football. We've seen. Once again, broadcast rights deals been been renegotiated and there might be an element where they're saying, oh, we're not getting as much money as we did. My word, there's a lot of money <laughs> splashing around in the top division. So that's the place to kind of hang on and, and play football. Um, I do understand, I was reading the comment there with regards to me talking about where Forest are now and if it ends like that, then great. But no doubt this is a, a slope that's been slid and slipped down, isn't it, really? You talk about the last two um defeats Matt and, and again it's the manner of it I think which then has you as a Forest fan worried concerned because you're thinking you, you're looking if the if, if the structure says Steve's our man then you're looking at Steve to go well you're going to have to get something out of these players that consistently hasn't been gotten out of them for quite a while now so like I said that, that one game type of thing well, that's possibly paper talk Twitter talk whatever that, that one game to change things it's hard to put things right in one game. What do they do? Batter Wolves 5 0, and suddenly everything's rosy again because these players have managed to pull the fingers out for one game before kind of resorting to that kind of above and below consistency lie. I, I, it's, it, it just, it just goes to show how tough the job is and how expectant the job is and what pressure and demands come on the job. I mean, it, it kept flashing up to the owner several times last night. That, that was a man not enjoying a football match. I think that was, Safe for everyone 
everyone to see, really, wasn't it? Is it one that's fixed attempts with a couple of good signings in January, a good striker to replace Taiwo, and um, we can be back on track with a couple of wins, a new manager, uh, you know, in the fold, or do the problems run much deeper than that, in your opinion? It runs deeper than that because of the balance of the squad. We, we've got a striker crisis at Forest. If Taiwo injured, um, Chris Wood's not out of the team because of injuries. He's out of the team because his performances have been ineffective. And then Divock Origi comes in and himself looks an absolute shadow of the impact sub that he, he was at, at Liverpool. And you know, Jurgen Klopp kept him around for a long time there. We, he didn't play him unless he absolutely had to. He's not the answer to the situation that we find ourselves in. So there's a collective responsibility there for Plan B in the absence of Taiwo. I'm not convinced Divock was necessarily Steve Cooper's signing, but Chris Woods was. He was some, someone he pushed really um, hard to, to sign. There was significant um, finance arranged to get that one across the line. And whilst he's shown flashes, he's he's nowhere near the, the level of striker that we need to get ourselves moving in the right direction of the table. So I think there are some fundamental challenges there. I think if it's Steve Cooper or anyone else in charge in January, they're going to look to overhaul the squad as best they can. Tavares and Santos are probably already back to their um, parent clubs. We have to try and find a striker. This isn't even a short-term thing. We need a long-term backup to, to Taiwo if, if he's going to be our man. The goalkeeper debate, is probably one for another day, but I'm, I'm not convinced that anyone has, has come in the last two years that surpassed the, the quality of Bree Samba. So there's there's four players of decent repute there that, that haven't outshone our championship goalkeeper. I think there are some fundamental challenges there and it's going to take at least two windows to address. But I'll repeat what I said earlier. Um, I think it would take an absolute miracle for Steve Cooper to still be in charge. I'd be delighted because it would mean we've gone on some kind of, of run, which has made him unsackable once again. Uh, but he's he's hanging by an absolute thread at this point. Mm. The, the, the thing is with this, but man, it's it's that chat and what what it what football demands now and football debate demands now, which is he thinks that or he thinks that or she thinks that or she thinks that. You can be sat here scratching your head wondering what on earth Forrest do. You, that's that's absolutely fine. That's what generates shows such as this. That's what generates comments. It's what generates debate in pubs, online, wherever. You you can you don't have to you don't have to over intellectualize what it is. You don't have to be a smart ass to say about formations and it should be this and we should be we right into this type of thing. Um, football managers and coaches are very highly qualified by virtue of the fact to manage in the Premier League. You have to have a certain attained a certain standard you've got to go through it and it's not quick i mean regardless sometimes you do it in different parts of the world it's a bit quicker than others um but it's it's vocational so you have to commit to it you have to put the time in you have to get the hours in on the pitch and on the training field and you do get a chance to go and um get cherry picked to go and lead a football club to pull a club out of the mire like steve did given where forest were when he took over given as i said 20 years worth of different men trying to do something with the club that has a gilded history, which weighs heavy on some and lands lightly on others. Um, and he, so far, I think, embraced what had gone before and was looking to push on and create something for the new generation, The you know what I mean, the next generation, the, the ones that carry on the torch from people that have seen days gone by filled with glory. But so uh, having all that and putting that all together, you can you can be very fond of Coop, but you can also be very miffed with team selection. You can like the players, but you can be extremely miffed with what they gave out last night. Um, so it just goes to show the love that's involved in discussing a club such as this, but just how tough it is. And then you've got to rely on the people that are paid well to be hard-headed enough to go, Steve Cooper, we love you, thanks, see you later, bye. We brought this man in. Your job now is to do better than that. Your job is to get into the middle of the Premier League and not have us debating, oh, Christ, are they going to stay in? Debating, well, is is there a top eight finish there? Is there a European finish there somewhere? Can we get players in on kind of big, reputed players that are going to take us to the next level? That's where the next challenge comes in. So it, it's, 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 it's a fascinating insight to the way that us three think that there's certain similarities there are differences to so the comments made by fans and people watching that 
Cooper out, Cooper in, Cooper doesn't know what he's doing. It's the players that are, are, are legging him up. It's the ownership that are giving him the right players. That just goes to show that Forest find themselves in a, in a spin. So there's no, to, to me, I don't know what the way out is right now. As as someone who he was on here as an ex-player that is now in the media, my professional opinion on it is God knows the, the way Forest go. Because we mentioned managers, Graham Potter, yeah, he's... Very good boss. Would it work at Forest? Don't know. Mentioned Lopetegui. He's got Real Madrid in his CV. That might be a different beast to manage in Forest. Kieran McKenna, unbelievable coach. Unbelievable coach. Has managed big players at United and Spurs. Has done wonders with Ipswich. Can he make the step up? Don't know. You don't know <laughs> until they're actually there. Could could you have foreseen Steve taking Forest to the Premier League? No, not when they took over because they were terrible. Now, it's, now, I'm not saying that that's gone full circle, that they're now <laughs> back to being terrible in the Premier League but a, a division higher but the answer to it all is is not remotely straightforward no and I do feel that you know the cycle the journey whatever the has come to an end probably with Cooper based on what I've seen but the one thing I can't get on board is anyone who kind of revels in Cooper going is anyone celebrating and think this is going to solve our problems I think firstly you're wrong and secondly you, know, you have to respect what he's done for the football club and the city and even if it hasn't worked out at the end, because like you said, products, it never works out at the end, there's no call for joy in any of this because we've got a lot of problems. And you know, sacking Steve Cooper doesn't eliminate all of them, certainly. Um, just looking ahead to the Wolves game for the last 10 minutes or so, uh, attempts. I mean, do we have to go there? <laughs> Give us some go... attempts. <laughs> I love to tell you what I love. We've lost 5 0, and we such has been the debate that we haven't even analysed some of the shambolic defending for each of those five goals. Oh, you can't but, call it defending, can exactly. you? It was like a, it was like a training ground exercise for Fulham. My God. So we'll, 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 gloss, we'll gloss past that. Um, how do we beat Wolves? That's the question, really, isn't it? Well, look, there's certain players he can't start now. He can't start Sangare. He can't drag his record signing twice in two games. Um, see what we've all seen in terms of not being brave enough, not being intense enough and, and putting him back in the side. He probably has to restore um, Morgan Gibbs-White, who we've seen drift in and out of games from the right-hand side. And that's been a failed experiment as well. He probably wants to start both wingers. I was really interested to see that hudson Doy and Ilanga were both there. I think with fitness, that's probably been his plan all along. And to pair them with with Tyra with, with, and, and Gibbs-White in the, in the hole. He's got to find another midfielder then to pair with with Gibbs White and Ryan Yates, who I, I think is that player who can be a lightning rod for what he wants to get across, for the effort, for the intensity, for a backs against the wall performance when we need absolutely nothing left on the pitch in pursuit of a of a point or or three. So that that blend will be interesting. I'm not sure about Felipe. I think Murillo's become a dropper at this point, but the 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 second uh, Jimenez goal. Um, had shades of mm. the Warrell incident against Luton, which has cost him his place in the side and, and the squad um, ever since. He doesn't look like quite the same player as, as last year. We've just seen Olerena put in one of the most passive second-half performances that I've seen all season, with two other recognised right-backs to, to come into the come into the side. Um, Toffolo's had a lot of credit for being... The seven out of ten, steady Eddie, but his marking for Iwobi's first goal, the lack of uh, pressure on the cross for Iwobi's second goal um, suggests that he'll be under the microscope as well. So picking a team is going to be not an impossible. But it's about motivation. He needs to get across how important this is, not just to his reputation in the club, but to the individual reputation of every single player that represents Forest, because they're either going to be in this side for weeks to come or they're going to be out on the rear in January. And he can't underline the importance of that. If that wasn't a final throw of the dice and the boldness in picking a new striker and two out on out wingers, then it has to be this weekend. I think we're going to see him retreat to the players that he trusts, irrespective of their transfer fee, their wages or their technical reputation. And he's going to call for effort and desire rather than having 11 technical footballers who seemingly can't translate a plan into action. Uh, 700 people with us, which is great, considering you know we did one of these at 11 o'clock or 10 o'clock last night. I know other podcasts have done their stuff as well, so very grateful for that. Like I say, do click like if you can and subscribe, because that's how I keep doing this, paying my bills and not having my wife tell me, what are you doing starting this from scratch? <laughs> yeah, she's been very supportive, to be fair. So, um, is she watching? I'm, I'm, 
She watched a bit last night. Oh, not that yeah. supportive then. She can't <laughs> quite work out why he keeps going to the spare room and locking himself away for night. Even. <laughs> <laughs> She's just downstairs, really suspicious. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on what Temps was saying then, I've actually just knocked together an A team and it is ugly, but this is what is a sort of <laughs> possible option in terms of going back to players you trust. So I don't know if this will be the team, and I'm not even advocating it for it particularly, but bombing out players who I don't think the manager can buy into. So a back three, Nia Kate, Felipe, and Murillo. Look, Nia Kate could be Joe Worrell if he goes cap in hand and says, Please help me keep my job. You love this football club. Uh, that's possible. Nico Williams, right back. I mean, the fact we've got four right backs and we don't know who the best is, is a bit of a joke. But, mm. you, you know, that could be Montiel. I would not pick Olerena on the back of that second half. Uh, really a player who sums up the collapse of this football team. A month ago, looked really good, good going forwards, chips are down. I don't know if it's a lack of confidence or a lack of effort, but absolutely went missing last night. So he's gone. Yeah, Mangala and Ryan Yates. I don't think they even work together. So, but at least they try. Mm -hmm. Certainly in Yates's case, they played the last two games and not worked. Harry Toffolo left back. You know, seven out of ten, as Tem says. Mm -hmm. Danilo and Gibbs White in a box midfield. I'd even advocate for Andre Santos with a point to prove. Come in and show us. You think you should be good enough to play in this team? Go out and do something so he could play. And then Ilango up front, but he was played up front, and you know he wasn't any good at Liverpool, but. I'm not picking Divock Origi. Absolutely went missing as well last night after 20 minutes. Chris Wood hasn't really worked. So let's play 3-4-3 three, three and try and hit them on the counter-attack and let's show some bottle. I mean, that's an ugly side, Prutz, but at least Cooper might be able to believe in them. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, if, if, it, if, if it gets a result, it doesn't matter how um, figuratively pretty it is, does it? It's... Um, it's, it's it's a whoever the eleven is is it an eleven to dig a manager out of a hole, and whether your opinion is the hole that is dug is one that he's done himself, or whether the players that he's picked have done it for him and, and give him a little nudge. Um, that depends on how you view Steve Cooper, but that's it has to be a team that has got to be resilient. Yes, you need that attacking flair. Yes, you need to be able to um, cause the opposition problems. Um, but as I said, the Wolves team that I saw very not not a million miles away from what Burnley were putting out, but they had more match winners. Wolves they they were they've got players that can really um, hurt Forest if they're not at it. You first put a call after that. I'm put myself in it as as a, as a player, and again, it's um, it's a long long way back in the mist of time. But and you and talk about the relative kind of quality that you're coming up against. Your first port of call in the Wolves game is to be hard to beat, to be in a position where if they do score, they've absolutely had to work for it. They've absolutely had to show magic to beat you. There can be abs there can be no passengers whatsoever. There's got to be a bit of fight. And yes, we're talking about the Super Glam Premier League, which is full of um, tactical nous and debate. The fundamentals will never change. One foot in front of the other, getting about the pitch, making sure that you're wingman, whoever it is, the next person alongside you in the formation is in touching distance, that communication is good, the information is passed on very quickly and concisely, runners are marked, people are picked up at set pieces for Christ's sake, don't dolly the ball into their centre half in the into their centre forward within the first 10 minutes after a relatively bright start i.e. West Ham um, and give yourselves as much opportunity to win a game there in the Premier League, which is tough in itself. The fact that they spent a long time gifting good players' opportunities and shooting themselves in the foot and being um, toothless with that. It's a toxic combination, isn't it? Ineptitude and inaction together are, are deadly. That's what gets you relegated. That's what absolutely gets you relegated. Ineptitude can push you to the brink, but being proactive enough to be able to kind of, Christ, stay together, lads. Let's be tough to beat today. Let's, As you say, Matt, let's be ugly today. Sorry, you've paid your money, you've travelled. Obviously, it's not as far as going down to London, but we're all in this together. My God, this is not going to go in the highlights really at the end of the season, but it might save somebody his job. might give us three points that gives us a cushion, that pushes us somewhere else. Because that is how inconsistent this group of players is. One game might mean nothing. One game might be the turning point of the season. You you, you don't know. Hmm. 
yeah um, i'm going on saturday so hopefully it's not as ugly as it might be but I'm, yeah i'm not <laughs> not confident people in the comments saying you know what about omabama delhi what about aguilera why not warrell yeah i'm on board with all that you know uh you could take out a lot of those players you could take out like uh, temps mentioned felipe there doesn't look quite right a few others aren't aren't at it we're picking a team from a position of absolute weakness and that's always a problem the other flip side temps is I mean, I don't believe this argument, but I'm playing devil's advocate. Do you say to Sangare and Dominguez and Olorena, you know, I'm picking you, prove a point that you're not that performance that we saw against Fulham and Everton from some of those players and challenge them to do something? Or do you retreat to the comfort of the few players that you can really believe in now? There's a type of player that wants to do everything that Prut said there, grab it by the scruff of the neck and prove that they're not, not part of the problem. And there's a breed of player too, and, and Prut's on a few of these as well, that want to externalise this, blame it on the manager, create every kind of excuse why it shouldn't be laid at their door. And you'll see a, a different <laughs> attitude if they decide that they, they click with the, the next man off the block. So no, Sangari wouldn't be anywhere near, near my team at the weekend. I'd go 4-5-1. I'd have Gibbs White in the 10 spot. I would stick with Chris Wood up top as the least worst option. And there have been a couple of instances, Luton at home, for example, where he's shown that he can do it. And I'd have two wingers, Langren, Hudson, Odoi. I think we're going to have to score to get something out of the game at, at Wolves. And a passive, blunt performance won't do anybody any favours. But just to finish my side, I'd have Yates and Mangala holding. And my back four would be Toff, Murillo, Niacarte and Aurier. And I'd put Turner back in there. Gosh, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, just, just, has just come in to, and hasn't saved a shot. But I don't know if just, he's yeah. to blame for any of them. Just to play um, devil's advocate with this and potentially how this might pan out over the course of the season. If if Steve is deemed surplus and moved on, do you not be remotely surprised if you suddenly see a group of players playing out of the skin and 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 it obviously, oh, it's the manager didn't get the most out of them. It's not. Players are selfish. Someone else comes in. All oh, right. Do you know what? Ugh, let's give it a go now. Let's see what we can do. That's what happens. That's what. That's that's the that's the inherent selfishness that gets a player through. The kids that he starts kicking around with at ten years old to become a professional footballer. That that's what. That's the seed of what gets you through that group to get you into the into the into the professional game. And that's what with ones that potentially are inconsistent, that seed's always there of, oh, someone's in there, got rid of him. He wasn't very good. You know what I mean? He wasn't getting the best out of us. Maybe, maybe not getting the best out of yourself, but that's it's a team game, so you can hide within that. That's that's what potentially could happen. So we might have different marks for these players coming into the season from what we see in the second half of the season. They might all be fantastic. Someone will come to yeah. the fore. Some forgotten man will come to the mm -hmm. fore. Let's say this that they fall in love with Andre Santos in the first training session, or they see something, Noma Bama Daly, who's... Um, you know, re reputedly not not always the best trainer. That 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 could happen. There'll be an unexpected winner and some unexpected losers from all of this. I also think Steve Cooper will go on to have a successful career, and I think somewhere like Crystal Palace, where they can just ease Roy out to pasture, bring him in with a brief to nurture what he's got, get the best out of Elise as a young boys that um, need his leadership, his kind of caring ear and, and motivation and not have this expectation of five or six in and out every year. I, I think that's Cooper's um, next appointment. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm with the general consensus of the comments that I'll be really sad to see him go because of what he's achieved, but fully understand that it's a results business and that the time is, is, is almost, almost nigh. It mm. really irks me that players with that level of ability um, turn, off, turn, turn the effort on and off. Uh, but I, I I do think that's what we're seeing. That's I mean that's that's such a great point, sense because then, like you say, when when Steve, if and when Steve moves on, um, you might find a coach there that's more successful with better players. Palace broadly have got better players than Forest. He might that, if he ends up there, he's got better players to work with. You know, what I mean, different attitude potentially to work with. That that that's it's a two way thing, isn't it? It's not a play. It's not just about players improving or thriving under managers it's about managers thriving with going bloody hell look at this look at this mob motivated fit die for every single point that they're going to get technically very sound intelligent when it comes to football and decisions he's like ah, bring it on let's get let's get going with this because <laughs> you see where he's been you see 
um, who he's coached, elite level England players as a togetherness. Liverpool, what that engenders as a as an atmosphere. Obviously, going via Swansea to Forest, so he, he he knows what he's capable of. He knows what he's at, but he absolutely knows his self worth. So there's an element of that where we're all pointing the finger and he's getting battered, but. That point's never really made, is it? I mean, no, he, he he didn't do enough. Well, hang on, I did I did enough with what I had. That's that's sometimes how you've got to kind of compartmentalize a job that undoubtedly will, it has been an emotional one for him, hasn't he? He said the first time he took charge at the city ground and looked at the trends and he kind of mouthed it, a jaw at the floor and thought, "Oh Christ, I've got a game to do here." But that groundswell of noise lifted him and took him somewhere else for a moment, and it's been repaid several times over. But if it is a part in other ways, I think, um, let's be honest, it'll always be welcome back. Yeah. And we could see come on, someone come in. This is the last thing from me. We could see come on, someone come in with a fresh look and get more out of the players. And, you know, that's fair enough. Managers have shelf lives and maybe it's time for Cooper to move on. My worry is once one mob gets a manager a sack, they'll get another manager a sack. So they need to step up. Uh, now whatever happens yeah and people will forget i mean I, I had resentment last night but people will forget this if they deliver over the course of a season with or without steve cooper that's a cynical world of it so that's fair enough and i don't care if they're mercenary some of them if they come here and they think you know i'm here for two years to get my move to you know a top six club or real madrid or whatever fair enough if you put your lot in for two years that's yeah it's fine. mutually beneficial <laughs> yeah Everyone benefits then. If someone's that good that goes and plays in the top four teams in this division or a top team on the continent, then he's obviously done a good job for Forrest, hasn't he? He doesn't, you know, you're not cherry picking anyone out of a team that's 16th and absolutely stinking the place out and go, he's going to do well with this lot because you don't know. I think the problem might be that we've got too many with that attitude. Mm. And, and I don't think you can carry a whole team of that. I think you still need a core group that are here for the the love of the club and want to stay for more than five years or whatever. But yeah, I don't, if players play well, fair enough. But if they play like they against Fulham, then that's not on. So yeah, we need to see a whole lot better with or without Steve Cooper. I do feel like it's the end of the cycle. And even if they get a result of Wolves, it's probably never in delaying the inevitable potentially, but no one would love Steve Cooper to succeed more than us because if he succeeds, Forrest succeed, but we are on rocky times for me. Uh, Prats, anything to add before we depart? <laughs> to, to that relentlessly grim onslaught. I, I put some decorations up to try and lighten the mood. Ob obviously not worked. Obviously not worked at all. Um, no, it, yeah, the, the great wonderful thing with football is as much as it kicks you in a part of the uh, body that is immensely painful, there's always that little kind of finding Nemo switch in your brain where it... it it changes, doesn't it? Yes, I know there's a lot of lingering doubts with regards to what happened over the last few games, and specifically last night. Um, and then going into the weekend, you can put a lot of things right. Hopefully, that's the approach. Um, on the flip side of it is Jim Rosenthal covered the game. There's a blast from the past, wasn't it, on Amazon? I thought that was a, a nice little touch, unless you were watching on a legal stream and you didn't see him. I was watching on Amazon. So I always watch one perfectly legal. I mean, matches, obviously, I mean, yeah. the, the coverage is good. It's not Sky Sports <laughs> good. It's good. But come on. <laughs> <laughs> certainly, certainly. Uh, Tempt, anything from you before we move? Well, before we finish, just repeat what I said. Thanks so much for the messages and comments, everyone. It's uh, it means a lot to me. Football's uh, an outlet, and that's why we that's why we all love it. But you know, it's been really nice to see that um, so much love and support pouring in when they see someone having a tough time, and I, I really appreciate that almost as much as I appreciate Prutz's film references today. We've had Cocktail and Finding Nemo in the same podcast, which is fantastic. But That's my yeah, sweet you... spot, somewhere in between their terms, <laughs> Cocktail and, and Finding Nemo. But I, I think as well, from my, and no, I'm not speaking on behalf of Matt, but I'm going to, but the, the fact that you joined us today has been wonderful, mate. It's lovely to see you. And I know everyone on air as well wishes you all the kind of love and um, best wishes that we can do. People say sometimes that there are no words. There are words. There's helpful words, but just know that there's a lot of people that are thinking about you, mate. Thanks, Prince. True. Very true, very true. And the right note to end on because, you know, football's the, uh, what does Greg say? The most important of the unimportant things. There's obviously more important things in life. But uh, we all love Forrest and we hope that it gets a lot better soon starting on Saturday at Wolves. Uh, good to have so many of you with us, as I say. 700 people throughout the stream is uh, pretty amazing and it means a lot. I might come back tomorrow and do like a 10-minute video on uh, some 
permutations and possibilities around the formations at Wolves, but there's only so many ways you can say you've got to play better than Fulham because you can't <laughs> you can't see Stop that again. Being crap. <laughs> yeah. <that. laughs> I could have summed up the last hour and 10 minutes in that. Oh, God, there's 666 people watching now. Oh, that's good. Eight people switched off. That's fine. That makes me feel better. Right. Uh, thanks very much to everyone who's uh, watched along, commented. Very much appreciated. Uh, I'll finish as usual. Temps, thank you very much. Cheers, fellas. See you soon. Prutz, thank you very much. A pleasure, you two, and everyone watching. Thank you. Yes. Uh, can we say Happy Christmas now? I suppose we can, because Prutz has got a Merry Christmas up behind him. <laughs> December the seventh. It, read, I think it's it does read the right way, doesn't it? Yeah, because obviously when you before you come on, it's backwards. So I thought, do I turn it around? And then obviously because I'm thick, I realised that that wasn't the thing that you do. It would have been funny if you turned it around and it said <laughs> yeah, exactly. Go, Why have you put a sound in backwards? You wally. <laughs> <laughs> right. Thanks very much, everyone. Potentially see you tomorrow, if not after the game on Saturday when I get back, and we'll do a bit of a stream. But in the meantime, have a good few days, and we shall see you soon.